It is well, wonderful. Okay, hi guys. Thanks for joining us for our third and last day of the wildlife uh, painting workshop. Come in and join us if you'd like. Uh, you can watch, see what we're doing. We're going to try to finish up the impala first, and then we're going to jump in and finish up our flamingo. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. I know everybody's been chomping at the bit. There were a lot of them were here early, so that's good. Um, and we're good. We're going to start a little bit earlier than 10, and that's great because we've got a lot of work to do. So, with that said, as I mentioned before, I'm going to jump in and start working on the backlighting of my plants up here. And I had my little brush picked out a second ago, and I don't know where I placed it. So that is typical. Oh, here it is. There's what I'm looking for. And, uh, okay. So we have all this plant, plant life up in this area here, and, and we're having our light sources coming from our sunset. So if you have your cadmium yellow, your cadmium yellow light, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm add, mixing a little bit of oil with my cad light, cad yellow light. And if it's a little bit too light, and I, I mean too bright, I think I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. And it's really not dry enough to touch, but I'm just going to start. And I'm not outlining it per se. I'm tapping in my um, highlights around the plant. It's kind of like outlining, but not, not a big old heavy line going around it. And I want to skip spaces because the light doesn't dance around always, you know, in the way that we think it's going to. It's not going to be that perfect all the time. For those who have an actual. Um, photo reference of the painting, you can use that as a guide um, as to how I'm doing this. I'm just kind of hitting around the exterior part of the plant because then I'm going to go back in <coughs> with white and do basically the same thing in some of the areas. Yeah, this is where I think Larry's got the best situation going in here because he's got a mall stick attached to his easel, <laughs> which means he's going to have a steadier arm. But maybe that will um, add to the uh, the uh, uh, make mine look a lot more authentic if it's wiggly and bumpy and crazy because I can't hold it straight, so I'm not leaning on anything here. Did everybody go and have a good dinner last night? No. I should have. I should have asked you, Anne, where you went, because I didn't even ask to think. Well, you know, did you? Where did you go for dinner last night, and what did you do? I just had snacks. I didn't go out. Ah. We ended up going to West Town Mall last night. Oh, have fun! I'm going there tomorrow. Today. Today. You don't know what day it is either. Uh -uh. <laughs> I called my daughter yesterday morning and thought she was at work. I said, I'm sorry, it's Saturday, isn't it? Uh, oh, I was confused yesterday <laughs> when it was Saturday because on my phone, every time the garage door goes up, I get an alert. Uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking, Hannah's at work, Matt and I are here, you know, who's getting into the house? <laughs> and then that reminds it's Saturday, Hannah's home. Uh, <laughs> I'm adding a little bit more white to it because I don't want it to look weird. It looks almost too yellow. <clears throat> okay. Let me see which brush you're using. I'm one. using a s very small round. Um, it's, it says it's a number six round, but I have a hard time believing this is a six of anything. I got a four last night at Hobby Lobby. So that'll work. Yeah, but that little whisker brush you have, that's a pretty sweet little brush. You just want me to break it in. Don't yeah, you? I want that cherry pop right here <laughs> in this class. <laughs> Sometimes on a brush, um, I will actually really load it up almost to where it's goopy. 
<coughs> really heavy load on my brush. <coughs> and if I have a really steady hand, I just drag that, that very lightly so I can get an extended uh, application. <laughs> it's because I'm basically lazy. And I'm trying not to have to keep dipping and loading. Now, if you have the control, I'd, I suggest it's a, you know, it's a good idea. If not, do not do it or else you'll get a really bloppy painting. Yeah. I'm not going into the black. I'm going right up next to the black or the dark part of the stem. So do not get into it too much. The, just go right up to the edge of it. There isn't going to be a lot of soft edge on that, okay? And now, it's just yellow and white. It's cadmium yellow light plus white. I don't have any of the light, so I'm going to add a lot of white. Okay. If you need some cad light, I, I can I have some here for you. Yeah. Okay. Give me a smidge. Okay. Room. Hang on. I'll put this down for just a second. You know, I've been lucky <coughs> to have anybody else need cad light. Everybody else has it. I've got three, and I only have two. Do you know what's interesting about some of the paint that I have acquired? <coughs> some of these tubes, you can you can look at them and tell they're pretty darn old. Um, okay. I am lucky enough to have people who have antique stores that when they have estate sales of old artists, they give me all their paint. <laughs> and I have been able to share a lot of the paint with some of my students over the years. And... Um, some of the other supplies that I've gotten through them, but I kind of covet the CAD names when I can get them. I don't always share. <clears throat> you go to garage sales and buy I, I, do, I didn't go to garage sales. I've had, um, uh, I have, my studio is in downtown Kingsport, right. and there's a lot of antique stores. Ah. And um, one of the antique stores in particular, I don't mean to give them, go ahead and give them a nice plug here, but, um, P&J um, Antique Store, Jerry, anytime there's a um, an estate sale, he's been kind enough to bring the paints to me. Ah. And some of the times these paints okay. may be, um, you know, they could be from the 50s or 60s, but they're still good. Um, the two, you know, the, the, but you can tell by the packaging or the fact that there's not warnings on the labels. <laughs> When you have a full CAD, you know it's the, there's a date. There's got to be, you know, what, whatever the date is on it. I, I, I can even, you know, but I have gotten paintbrushes, nice Grumbacher paintbrushes <clears throat> that had never been used, that still had the price tags on them from back when in Kingsport we had something called, uh, a store called the uh, um, Dobbins Taylor, Dobbins Taylor um, store was a store that had everything. I mean, if you needed to get tack for your horse, or a new shirt, or a toaster, they had it. It was that kind of store. It just had everything. Your washer and dryer could come from uh, Dobbins Taylor. The toaster here is dangerous. <laughs> what? What? The toaster here. Oh. They got metal tongs. Yeah, I was kind of, <laughs> we got off the subject just a little bit, yeah. but yes, our, our toaster, <laughs> the toaster here, yeah, I don't know if we, who, who was eating breakfast here. Anybody? Oh yeah. Okay. They have metal tongs to go to get their muffin out of the toaster, and I'm thinking, what? they must not like us as guests because they don't want us to see us come back. There might be a serious um, customer service issue there. Well, so what I was doing with that is I would I would I would spoing up my toaster so that my muffin would jump out, and then I would try to grab it with the tongs as it was up in the air. Because I didn't want to stick my, I didn't want to stick my uh, the tongs into the toaster. You know, we were told as kids never to do that, like stick a fork in the toaster. But yet they were trying to make us do that. So you know, Matt says, "Oh, it's probably grounded, or there's probably something to it that's not." Tell him go ahead and try it. Yeah, I said, you know what? My logic was whenever it pops up, <laughs> the the coils are no longer on. Now, I mean, I probably wouldn't trust it. But that's how it should be. Is whenever it, you know, whenever it snaps up, it turns off. 
but did it or not? I don't want to test it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. All I know is that I always thought you were supposed to have wooden, wooden ones. You know, for all we know, I, you know. This is terrible down here. So. Okay. <clears throat> You're not going into the middle, just the little. Yep, just right up to the sides and edges. Okay. And it's more like spots of light. It's not, I'm not making this look. Like it's been outlined. So if you're curious, you you're welcome to come up here and look. If you can't see from what I'm doing on the on the screen, I don't want to you know I don't want to look at it and see that it's outlined. Oh, that's a lot brighter than what I've got. Well, I, uh, I keep toning it down, and I'm adding. See, right now I'm just going right here where I have white that's got blue uh, pad mixed in, yeah. and just going back over some of them. Why are you putting it down there? Because the, the light's picking it up. Okay. Okay. I'll just. My paint is really, really dry this morning. Is it? Yeah. I may have to squirt out some new. Uh, I did that last night. I ready the problem. Now I'm actually going to do the same to some of my grass, but not all of it, because I'm going to be putting in more grass here in a little bit. Did I tell you we were going to backlight the Impala? Oh. Did I ever mention that? No. <laughs> I don't think you did. Okay, yeah. Just so y'all know, <laughs> we're going to backlight this Impala. I think it would be a good idea. To you think? I think you're right. I think we'll go with it. <laughs> Anne suggested it, so we're going to go. That's right. All right, Anne. Well, I told my son last night what animal we was doing. And he said, well, it's just a difference in size, Mama. Because I had told him we was going to do an antelope. Well, <laughs> an impala is an antelope. Yeah. He oh, said it just it. depends upon the size. The biggest Whether they're different or not. <clears throat> you know, leave it to you. Is that what he said, huh? Yeah. Well, it's one of the many antelope that they have. They have, they come in all different sizes. You have the Dick Dick, which is one of the tiny ones. I mean, smaller than a Pomeranian. Oh he gosh. said something about that was tiny, and I, I don't know. A Dick Dick? That it's probably tiny. about this big and about this yeah. tall. He said oh. it was a and tiny. It's a, and it stays the low into the grass. And it's, it's one of Africa's little five. For people that are hunters, um, the little five, the Dick Dick's on that list. I don't know what else makes up the big, the little five list, but the big five is the lion, the leopard, the cape buffalo, the elephant, and the rhino. And of course now, you know, a lot of these animals are protected now, which is a good thing. I start to say as well they should be. As well yeah. as they should be. Uh, I. <clears throat> I got I mean, it's funny. I grew up in a culture of hunters, but my my family that hunted, it was what you know, white-tailed deer. Uh, that's pretty much it. They didn't even, they were not bird hunters. They were not, you know. And I've got no problem with that. Not that I personally would could hunt. Um, I couldn't either. But I I do respect that, and um, and it's necessary. I actually did that's a great. paper when I was in college. I don't have a problem if it's for food, actually, for something, but just to hang on your wall. Well, uh, you know, it's it. the thing is, if it wasn't for hunters, and I know I'm going to say something that's very unpopular with a lot of folks, uh, uh, you know, the, the licensing for hunting does help preserve a lot of, you know, hunting and fishing license, make it so that there's still game available. 
um, if, if it was done in a per if it was a perfect world we would only call the you know nobody wants to shoot does right because they, they don't offer a good trophy but if you're actually indeed working on population control of any species do. you need to take out the does yeah. um, and and if you live in an area where you'll start to see when animals get a little bit out of control with population it's when you all of a sudden you have deer eating your bushes that didn't used to eat your bushes because you lived in the city Right. I see that where Chip I live. Monks. Chipmunks is driving my friend crazy. They're chewing all of her flowers off. And my brother said they got up in his car engine, chewed the wire. Oh, gee whiz. Chipmunks? Yes. Well? I said, are you sure you're not talking about squirrels? He said, I saw them. <laughs> I saw these things. I chipmunks use their conduit. Uh, oh, gosh. Tell you, they're destructive little varmints. They are. Too bad it was a low voltage wire. Uh, <laughs> now, Matthew, they are cute, though. <laughs> I do think they are adorable. I'm going ahead and highlighting a little bit on the outside of my Impala. I went a little too light with the uh, the cad yellow, so I'm adding more white to it. Now, I'm not done yet with my animal, but I'm doing this now just to go ahead while I'm in the process here. Of backlighting, I'm, I've kind of got that thing going on here, and so some of this may change. Now it's not; it's only going to, you know, you're not going to run it down the back too much yet. We're just going to do the allow the exterior part of the the impala and again now if this was still wet I would if you look at your um, photo reference of the painting there was a kind of almost an ethereal glow because I was able to work in wet on wet but since we really don't have that today I may try to do it a little bit but it probably won't be very successful um, so this is basically for Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if any of that's wet still. I'm gonna probably have to have some. I got some. Oh, let's just see if they can do this. Uh, I could probably, yeah, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just taking my brush with white paint and a lot of oil. Not so much that it's drippy, but just enough to keep my white paint working for me here. I'm blending it a little bit on my palette and I'm just rubbing it a little bit back and forth over the area where I just tapped in that yellow. And I'm just kind of making that glow. It's working a little bit. And I know it's really hard to see it on the monitor. But I'm just kind of making it look like it's it's glowing instead of just having drops of light on top of its back. So I'm going right above the line that I just made with the, or the dots that I made with the yellow. And I'm going over it with some white. And I'm hoping beyond all hope that it is still wet enough, my background is still wet enough to go ahead and let it blend. And I'm keeping it very close. I'm not, um, blending out very far. So I'm using very little paint. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks okay. Now I'm not going to go down too far on this. Uh, I'm just going to go to about here. Because I'm not really certain yet how much light would actually show below the animal once I, like its legs down here, might not have too much of the light. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go back and re you know, just reemphasize some of the lighter yellows in here closer to the animal's body underneath the little ethereal glow that we created. I'm actually going to take and I'm going to have to squirt out some more. Oh, well, let's see. Let me try this here. I'm taking a little bit of um, cad yellow deep, mixing it with a little cad medium red 
and um, I'm going to go a little bit below that, below the yellow that I have. And wherever you can see like the animal has wrinkles, I guess I should turn my picture back on here. It's going to be hard because I, I do, I'm doing it completely differently. Come on, let's see. It's just where that light is kind of hitting him. Like on the back of his ear. And, I, I, and sometimes, you know, you can't rely always on your, on your reference because it's not always going to show you that. Because in this case of our, the photo reference, and I'm seeing, I didn't do too much of it on the back of my um, painting. And so you can follow the painting as, as closely as you want to. I'm kind of, like I said, I, I think I mentioned I was kind of going off the, the script a little bit. But I'm going ahead, I'm just, uh, I'm adding a little bit of the, where I know the light would come down, but it's not going to come down as far. It's not going to be the brightest light. So that's why I took it down a notch in brightness by having the cad medium, or cad, cadmium yellow dark or deep with a little bit of cad red light to create a pretty interesting orange color. Where are you putting that one? On the um, right below the area of the of the deeper yellow. If anybody is curious and if they can't see what, what I'm doing, you're welcome to come over here and take a look. I'm going right below my yellow line onto the animal's body. Okay. Okay, and that's with the orange. Right, with the orange that I've created, but I'm not being very heavy with my paint, folks. And I haven't even gone to the other side of the animal, because I, I think I mentioned I was going to try to work across. So because we know we're dealing with wet paint, and because I know I'm going to have to lean my hand on something, I'm going to probably go ahead and hit the, hit the horns. So... Because I have my iPad, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my horns here so I can really look at them. That's when I zoom, okay? I already have this, these animals' horns in. Now I'm going to do the detail work on the, on the horns. Therefore, I will be putting on my glasses. <laughs> I'm going to study them just a second. I'm going to go in with the lighter highlights. In this case, I'm using purple. I'm going to go in with purple, with white. In this case, I'm also using a little of the um, King's Blue. What kind of brush are you using? So far, I'm using the same brush I started with. It's a number six, Hamburg. Um, round? It's a round, yes. And actually, if this Hamburg is a badger, a synthetic and natural badger bristle. So it's not as tough. It's not a tough brush. I'm actually going to add a little pink to it. Um, I'm, I'm pinking up my purpley highlight here just a little bit. And you can see I'm mixing it here. on. It's right here on the palette, this little purpley color here. I'm going to start right here. Now I keep. Th I can't think of anything else but what Buddy was trying to tell me the other day, and I'm glad you sent me that link or what that word was. <laughs> I need to look up about. Tell me, say, say the word again. What it's called with the horns, the. Oh, the. The it's, word. It's, it's a Fibonacci number, Fibonacci spiral. Okay. Now we know. It reoccurs in nature and even the spiral of the universe. It's the same formula. Well, there you have it. 
So that's what we're doing, and I, can, I couldn't repeat that word right now if I had to. Fibonacci? Fibonacci. F-I-B-O-N-A-C-C-I. -I. Okay, so we're, get, we're getting our, our spiral <laughs> here, our Fibonacci spiral. <laughs> I'm going a little bit darker here. I mean, I, I mean the, so I'm actually doing the highlights on the, on the horns. I'm going to go in a little bit darker here. I'm mixing a little bit of black in with my purple. Just to kind of, um, you know, you can see there's some dark areas and the, where the spirals come up. Got it? <laughs> now they're going in with it with the highlight too. So we have our medium tone, our dark tone. And I'll go in with the light right over the top. Oops, and see, I'm putting my pinky on here, and I've still got a wet canvas, so I'm going to make marks all over it. Okay. And sometimes when stuff like that happens, you can, I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm going to squirt out some cleaner white here. My white's getting pretty messy. I might get a sink white today. And I am going to go ahead and highlight these horns a little bit with just white. Now I know that it's not going to look white white when I put it on there since I because I have a wet canvas. I mean wet areas that I've already just painted. So I know there's going to be a little bit of blend in this which is just fine with me. But the very tips of the horns, are going to be highlighted. And they're going to follow the tops of those spirals. I am. I'm using white. And when I do my load on my brush, folks, I'm trying to sh trying to show it here. I have it right on the tip. If you can see, it's not all the way down to the, the fuel part of the brush. It's right on the very, very tip. So don't overload your brush. That is one of the biggest mistakes I see with a lot of people, especially when they're doing fine detail. I load my brush right at the tip. And if you're looking, you'll see that there's just even a, a glob, if you will. If you can yeah. see that right at the tip of the brush. I'll use that little blob of paint and, and not press the bristles down. Do not overpress. Um, I'm letting the brush do the work. It's not really my force of my hand. come over and do the other one. I may have a, not have ridges. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a ruffle. Not have ridges. <laughs> okay. I'm trying. Frito Lay loves you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won't send me any money. <laughs> okay. That is Frito Lay owned by uh, Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Yep. See. This is why we educate these children so we don't have to remember all this stuff. That's right. Well, wow, Matt knows everything. These are nothing I, this is not anything I taught him. He just came out that way. 
Yeah, my son did too. He just knows everything. But he does get that from me, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who mine has to get it from my husband. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go crazy on this, although these are... I may put a little bit of dark underneath them. Anybody's welcome to come up and take a look if they feel like they, they need to... I'm not going to put as much create, you know, detail. Obviously, when I did the um, horns on the larger piece, um, you could, you know, I had more horns to, you know, more space to work with. But I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So I'm not going to go crazy here. See, so I'm just getting, so I'm blowing it up a little bit, and I'm going to actually take this down a little bit. I don't think I want that much in there. That's better. I think I'll go. I think I'll be done with that part. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get yours up and go on your iPad? Yeah. Did anybody else take advantage of all the uh, sales? <laughs> Right, we, I already know that Linda did because we were at the mall with her. <laughs> she, was, she was getting all her free stuff. She was getting free beads and she was getting her she was getting her iPad. Is today still? Yes. It is till midnight. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, Matt, we need to order those. If we can get sneakers for you for cheaper, that'd be great. Yeah, we can. Well, I know because your sneakers aren't cheaper, but. but we also can't get them online with that free either, so it's. All right, well, I'm not but worried some, about it. Some places online yeah. just might not charge tax. We'll look at it. Yeah. <laughs> what kind do you want? Matt, what kind do you want? I use Mizunos. Um, yep. I, otherwise, my feet don't work. They're from Italy? I don't know. Actually, Mizuno, I think, is a... Chinese or Japanese company. Oh, okay. Mizuno makes a lot of, it's running, like they make great running shoes. So if you're a runner, runners know, I, I used to run in Brooks back in the day and I used to run in, my first running pair was were Mizunos, were wave runners. I think and my he, uncle has some of those too that he bought overseas. That's well, he, where he buys his shoes overseas. Oh, well, no, these, I mean, they're made, they're probably made here. You probably can get them made here or, you know, they're, but, um, but they're a good, a good, good shoe. That you can't wear out too quick. Well, the thing is, if you need pronation, like, unfortunately, my, my, they probably inherited, Matt's probably got my feet, and I pronate, and they have stability in them, so it, it helps you stand all day without getting fasciitis or problems in your feet. That's why, because Matt had fasciitis before. Yeah. Well, oh, a, a, as an, you know, my line of health care, and I stand and I wear lead all day. My favorite shoes, and they squeak something horrible. I wish they didn't. You can hear me a mile away. You can't get away with nothing. I can get away with nothing, and that's okay. But uh, Echo? Yeah. Oh, yeah I wear there. them all the time. I, you know, 12, 15 hour days. I'm good. I, yeah. I saw it online somewhere mm -hmm. last night for like $40. I mean, Echo. Echo's the hundred plus. Yeah. I buy them when I can find a little sale. Oh, yeah. I love them. I, I, I love them. That's been the best shoe I've ever had. I've had Souths. I've had. Yeah. I can't wear a hard sole shoe, though. Like, a lot of people love dance codes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if they work for people, great. But, whew. <laughs> now, I, I have worn dance codes because I stand at the uh -huh. easel all day. Um, I have had those before. But I I just don't yeah. They're I, too hard for me. Yeah, but it's funny. I can wear them and I don't my feet aren't fatigued though. Really? Like I'm wearing Birkenstocks and Birk Birkies have the, a little bit of arch support. They're I do like them and I can stand in them all day. Although my feet were really tired yesterday because then we got done walking around the mall and. Uh -huh. But it's funny. I'll even buy shoes that are. 
like I'll, I'll find them online and I get lucky. I found a really neat, they weren't even that expensive. Um, just little shorty boots, you know, little ankle boots. And they have arch support in them with a whole like stability thing and, and the in insole inside that can come out. And, and then I like the Vionics too. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm moving on to my Impala. Um, I'm, I'm starting to paint from the out, from the left to the right. I'm just moving through it. I'm looking at the colors. I'm just going through it here. Some purple forms. Oh my gosh. They're getting there. We're get, <laughs> getting them in there. I like the. I just like to have fun with the colors, and sometimes. Colors that you think wouldn't be there, if you really start looking, you're like, huh, sure enough, those are right there. You know, you, you'll see them. Um, I just want to give everybody a reminder that here at the end of the day, I'm going to do a drawing for my two demos. Um, so somebody's going to go home, there's going to be two people going home with my demo pieces. Yay. So... Thank you very much, in case I, d I haven't told you already, and I forget to tell you again, thank you very much for, for coming uh, to this workshop. And I know I know a lot of you all paint together with Buddy, and he's got other workshops lined up that are going to be coming. So I'll let Buddy be able to tell everybody before we leave today about the other workshops. Um, but I do want to just thank everybody who, who came. Thank you, too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, I, that. Wonderful. Well, I hope that everybody's learning something. And, and you, I, w I would also encourage you to follow me on um, on Instagram and on Facebook. You'll get and to YouTube see. Now, and YouTube. And you can hear your own conversations on this. And, you know, say, say for example, you get done, uh, we get done with the workshop, but you're really not satisfied with your piece yet and you want to work on it some more at home. You're able to go back in and look at this YouTube video. Sorry. And oh. bless you. Oh. Yeah, and you can, and you'll be able to look and see where you know it, it, what I've been doing, and maybe you have an opportunity to look at you know revisit your piece. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> well, I had my son to thank for that. He, he, last time we were here, we didn't we didn't do that, did we? Last time we just had the screen going. We just had the screen go going, but he was saying, you know, Mom, we should do live stream. Now, yeah. this is this is one of those things that it comes in handy when you have a son who knows all this stuff. Now, see, I wouldn't have had the first clue about any of this. Um, okay, I got a problem with my horns. I'm sticking out. I think I did them too straight or something. Um, it, you're probably going to get to... No, they're okay. They, I mean, okay. they can look like that. I mean, I just have mine this way. Um, but if you if you actually look at other Impala, it it that's not that's still within normal. Okay. I might need to thin that leg out, but. Are you mainly using white now? No. Actually, I switched. Over to one of my colors that I mixed uh, yesterday. I'm I'm back onto the body here, and I am using it's um, a combination of um, burnt sienna, a little bit of the um, the, the um, purple, okay. and white combination. It just cooled down the version of the you know the the uh, Impala colors. One of the ones that we mixed up the other day. The other day, I'm talking like it was so long ago. Way back when we were mixing colors. Yeah. This looks very purple. Well, remember it's dimmed light and I'm actually going to highlight some more and I'm gonna, when I start highlighting some more, it's probably going to be more with the blues, yeah. believe it or not less white than you think there's not that much white here because this is the, the the whitest white is really the highlights where where you have the backlighting 
and I'll be backlighting in here too on this on this animal. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Now, another thing I want to talk to y'all about is your direction of your brush stroke. Um, the direction that you use your brush stroke really does matter. It shouldn't just be that you're doing an application of paint and just saying being, you're, you're being done with it. I generally go with the way the fur is growing um, or the, the movement of that particular area of the body that you're working on. So I'm not taking a downward stroke going here, 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 here. I'm not doing that. But I'm seeing how the, the, the muscle or the animal's body moves through here. And so I'm doing just kind of a a stroke like this, a side to side with where the hair would normally grow. Um, even if you can't see your strokes, they do matter, okay? Um, everybody, I, I used to tease and say, you know, we were gonna get t-shirts made that says brush strokes matter. Um, you know, but I thought, I thought eh, maybe not. But they do matter. The direction you lay them down really does, makes for, you know, a more effective painting. I can actually show you um, in a, a photograph that I took at one of the museums that I was at. Actually, I was in Milwaukee at the art, the Fine Art Museum in Milwaukee. And if you've ever been there, I definitely recommend you go. Um, the architecture of the building was from the uh, Spanish architect Calatrava, and it's it's a kinetic a kinetic building. The whole roof of this thing opens up. Like you can be inside this this wonderful beautiful art museum and it look it's shaped like this and they can it opens like this oh, and wow. lets the light in and it can close. It's it's definitely yeah, if you're in Milwaukee, I definitely suggest you go. But anyway, um, and it was a painting that Van Gogh did, and of course Van Gogh tended to be there towards the his end of his painting career, very very impasto and thick with his paint. And you can really appreciate when you look at these paintings up close how his brush strokes really did matter. He just went um, in the, the directions of um, his, oh, goodness gracious. Sorry about that, guys. I have to turn the volume off here. Um, so you could actually appreciate the fact that where, where he would do the water going down the stream, it, it looked like it was flowing down the stream because his brush strokes conveyed that. Or the way dirt slid down the side of a mountain, you can see the direction that the dirt was headed. Everything made sense. Um, and you could really appreciate it. Because if you look at a painting in a, in a picture in a book, you can't possibly understand, you know, you can't, you can't get that information. You almost have to see it in real life. And so I definitely recommend to anybody who hasn't or hasn't done that much uh, looking at art in museums, please go, please go, because there is no, there is no substitute. I went overseas and we, my daughter and myself and my uncle again, he had taken us. We were sitting out in front of the loo. Ah, uh, see. We, and I didn't get to go in because he said, oh, it doesn't matter. He, evidently he wasn't interested in art. He said, I've been in there dozens of times. We're just not going to go in there. Oh, my and goodness. Nor my daughter got to go in. How, old, how long ago was this? Um, probably good. 10 years. Now, I've not been over to France. I've not been to uh, over, overseas I yet. Him, I said, we'll never get to come back again. And he said, oh, it's not worth going into. Um, but I, I have heard this. It is somewhat. They said the, yes. the Louvre is a bit of a, you I'm know. Go in. Oh, bless your heart. And I was sitting right and there. And I knew nothing at that point, but it was expensive. My daughter, was, yeah, my daughter was in, uh, had studied in England, and she'd been, she'd hop over to France for the day or whatever. And I said, when you go to France, please go to the Louvre. And she goes, Mom, you know, it's kind of a tourist trap. You realize that, right? You're, you know, you think you're gonna go see the Mona Lisa, and it's like this big, and everybody's standing around, and you can't get close. I said. Do it anyway. Right. Do it for your mother. So you can say, <laughs> and, and she did, and she said, it, you know, she goes, yes, it was tight. Yes, this, you know, she got a picture for me, and she, you know, I always tell people, get me magnets. I love magnets. Oh. So she bought, got me a magnet from the Louvre, and, um, but anyway, it was worth it for, you know, she says, yeah, no, it was good. Um, I thought it was totally worth it, and I knew nothing. How right. did you get to Mona Lisa? 
It's Not pretty there. small. It's about, like a, it's about this big. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's actually very small. Most of Da Vinci, a lot of Da Vinci's work was, um, if you go to the um, National Gallery, you can see um, one of Da Vinci's pieces, and it's pretty interesting. And again, it's a small piece, but he painted on the back of it, too. So that it's, uh, I think it's on wood panel. So one of the neat things that the uh, Smithsonian has done is they made it so you can view it from the front and the back through a wall. Wow. So it's like it's in the center of a wall. And if you're on the front of the wall, you see the front of the painting. And if you're on the other side of the wall, you see the other side of the painting. So that's pretty cool. I like that. But no, I, uh, I've not been there yet. I'm hoping to get there soon to just, I, I want to go, there's a lot of museums I want to see. Well, I understand the day because it's a big place. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have them there. Well, how many, I mean, we've got some really good museums right here in the United States. I mean, yeah. um, you know, of course, I, I, anybody knows me, if I get a chance, I like to go to D.C. Because they change, they change quite a bit as far as what exhibits are on and, but that's to me, I mean, it's a free museum, you, you know, yeah. you can go and and do all kinds of good stuff there. Actually, I'm planning on doing a, a watercolor um, plein air workshop in D.C. coming up soon. Um, for those, I, it, I don't really work with watercolor very much, but um, I use it mainly for sketching purposes. And I usually keep a little um, watercolor um, notebook and kit in my purse when I, I can travel with it and I can get in there I went for when they had the orchid show um, and painted um, at the orchid show that they had in DC and I've been lucky enough to paint in the um, Museum of uh, Natural History and did, did some of the animals inside of there um, been up to the Appalachian Museum. The Appalachian Museum, where's that? It's at my exit to 122. Um, but it's antiques and how the older people lived and how what they made and it's several acres. Oh. Yeah, I, I usually, I don't go, I don't get around to the too many of those types of museums. I'm mainly a art museum kind of girl. I Although I know that's the Appalachian arts and, their, and some of the culture is fascinating. I, um, I haven't really been around to see too many of what we have here, and I should, you know. Well, that's how I was raised. My daddy has several exhibits up there. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Do you know what the Heartland series is? Um, it seems like wasn't that something that there was a guy that used to because yeah. when I was in when I was in school Bill Landry. Yeah, and uh, uh, my dad had did five of those. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I re I do remember that but, I, but that was when I was in school at UT and that was a long time ago. Are they still doing Heartland series? It's reruns Because I do remember that and I always yeah. found that that fascinating yeah. Well, daddy said when he was growing up, if he wanted anything, you had to build it, make it, <laughs> or fix it. Yeah. Sure. And that's how he was taught. Now I'm using, a, I mean, it, it will seem kind of intensely blue, but really sometimes when, when, um, when white is in low light, it will look kind of a grayish blue. And I'm just kind of moving over this uh, Impala's backside a little bit. With a, with a bluish gray blue right gray. through here. I'm actually using my King's Blue with a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna. But since I have a wet, <laughs> since my butt's wet, it's, it's blending just fine. My Impala's rear end is still wet, so I don't really have to add too much to it. I'm going to tell him you sent him that message. I know. He'll love it. She said, my butt's wet. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, we're looking at the butts. Yes. <laughs> we're, work, we're working on butts here. I can say the flamingo found it. There you go. <laughs> so 
So sometimes the colors that you think aren't going to be in there are actually right, right there for you. Now I'm actually mixing a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of French ultramarine, making another grayish blue, and going on the underbelly of this, this guy here. I'm going to blend it in a little bit. It makes a very believable gray, especially where I need some shadow. Burnt sienna and... Uh, burnt sienna and um, French ultramarine blue and mix some white in there and get a nice, nice gray. Now let me ask you something. With the workshops that you've taken in the past, does your instructor tell you precisely how much to mix? Or do they just tell you to mix it? They tell us okay, to mix, mix it. <laughs> okay. So they tell you the colors, but, but that... They, they usually have a sample or to try to match. Yeah, they come around with like a paintbrush and you just dab it onto your palette and you go, oh. And say, that's you what you're that supposed color. to be working with. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. But do you usually have where you can see it being painted at the same time? Yeah. Do you, they have a screen too, like yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. It's just curious because I'm always, always looking to improve. They do. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm mixing a little bit more white into my blue color that I used for the. Um, and see, I've already muddied up my blue, my white. I keep <laughs> keep making a mess here. That's how I paint. Yeah, well. I'm going to have to get some more white. Probably put it in another area. I want that soon. Now, since I know that I have wet paint, I'm going ahead and just taking straight white. But you have to understand when I'm when I'm loading my brush. Again, I'm loading it super super light. There's hardly any paint on this brush. I'm not making for a really intense. It, it's very subtle at this point. I'm using a small brush, and I'm being very subtle. And I'm also going with the stroke that I know the hair is traveling or the direction of the limb is traveling or whatever it is I'm painting. I'm not going against the grain, so to speak. I'm still doing the yellow on the back of it. That's okay. But I'll get there. And I'm going to come around here in just a few and take a look, see, and see where we are. You're going to say, well, you need to stay on mine because you haven't done this and this and this. <laughs> uh, I, bet it, I bet it's looking pretty good. It, now, let me ask you, good. has every, how, have, do you feel like you've learned anything? <laughs> yeah, no, that say. didn't, no, Heather, that just sounded like, what? <laughs> this is completely oh, different. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. so, okay, good. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, thank now, you. Now, you might not feel like you you know, got through. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to say something. I don't really have a concept of what you've done before. Right. So I, I don't know how much you know or how much you don't know. And so I'm just throwing That's stuff out sure, yeah. at you and hoping, you, you you know, it's like a catcher's mitt. You hope you catch some of them, catch, catch some of these fly balls. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I just want to, I'm asking for feedback just so I can know um, that you feel like this has been worth it for you. And that you may have learned something. Um, and that you can go home and do it. And I want to be able to improve. So I'm, always, I'm just, it, you know. Yeah, because I, I feel very, very blessed about being able to do what I love doing. And I love it when other people get excited about doing it too. Um, I can't think of a better job, honestly. Now I'm taking a little bit of white and I'm looking at the belly area of this Impala. I've already put my blue grays down. I have my darkest, darkest blue gray here on the very bottom. Then I have my medium light blue gray and now I'm just taking a little bit of the white, straight white, but I already know I have a wet surface. So my white's immediately blending into 
into this animal's belly. And I'm able to highlight and create that form. You know, I have the illusion that he's got this, you know, full belly full of grass, I guess. He's been grazing. And I'm going to come right below this area and just a little bit of highlight here, but still leaving the, the uh, idea that there is a... Um, you have belly and part of the chest running into to the back end of this animal. And where I know a little bit more light is coming through his legs, and I can see it in my photo reference, and I'm not sure, let me look at my, you kind of see it on the, on, on the Impala painting, and I know I'm looking, it's funny because the Impala painting that I did is more purple where I've gone more blue on my on this painting and it's it's okay okay I'm gonna do that here too even though you don't see it so much here I'm going why why I know the light would how the light would be so I'm if we highlighted the inside of his thigh just a tiny bit now <clears throat> It's fun. Now, that's his tail. You know, this is a buck. I can see his naughty bits just a little tiny bit through his tail, but I'm not going to, it's it's so, you know, some some artists like to really, you know, enhance that. <laughs> uh, simply that. because they know, like, if you're a game person and you're, you know, you're selling this stuff, they're going to be like, yeah, no. the hunters like that. I, I, and I like to stay as close to accuracy on my pieces as I can. I really can't see that much of it. So I'm just not going to go there. Um, so we're just going to leave that alone. I'm going to put in his tail. And as soon as I get his tail in, I'm going to come around. I'm doing a little bit lighter. Let's see here. It's not doing what I want. I'm using the, again, back to the burnt sienna purple and white mixture that we made. And I'm going over this area of his tail, giving it a little bit of light through here. Because there's a, there's a black stripe that runs through his tail and I'm going and I'm again with the way the fur goes I'm staying with that fur and I'm moving it up through so there's always going to be a little bit of a highlight there and I'm actually going to go a little bit lighter because I can't see what I'm doing it's not it's not translating so I'm going even lighter again there we go that's what I want to see I'm going to go highlight up over his little little haunch there. He's got that on this side too. And it's a little bit lighter through here. Never knew it. One little animal's butt can have this much attention, huh? Yeah. He's got a rainbow bit. It is pretty interesting. I'm going to put some black black back in here. Clean my brush off so I can have real black and not gray. That's what I go back to. I know. I, I know. Um, you know. It happens. So aggravating. Sometimes when I'm putting my brush down, I don't even lift it up. So if you're looking at what I'm doing right now, I'm just wiggling it all the way down and letting up on my brush as I get towards the end to, so that I can uh, have a more uh, refined line. And then I lift up, like pull off, and that gives it a, you know, it tapers the line as I lift off. And I'll see if I can show you again on this one. So if you're looking at the, uh, so I'm starting here, and I'm wiggling it side to side, and I'm pushing, and I'm pushing. And as I get down towards the bottom, whoops, I lift up. And that's with the dark color. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. putting in there, there his, like, racing stripes. Right. <laughs> and he's got just a little bit of a light, a stripe right down his, his tail here. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing? Say, we're doing fantastic. Just fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and walk around, see how everybody's doing. Okay. And we're going to take a look, see. Let's see here. Yeah, so you're, you're doing like what I do. I'll sometimes move down to my lap. You're doing very well. Just catching up. And you're doing you're doing fine. You're you're. Hey, hey, your butt's looking really fabulous. Thank I'm just you. saying. I mean, did you hear that? Did time. you hear that today? If, if somebody's not told you today, let me be the first to tell me tell Thank you your you. butt looks amazing. Okay. All right. As Thank does you. yours. I am so proud of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, we should be proud of our butts. You too, <laughs> gentlemen. It's good. <laughs> I love, love, love these. This is I like You got a little too. crazy on the inside here, and yeah. because the light's not going to show on the inside there, you might want to go back and take some of that highlight out. Okay. Um, you're. You're doing the, the highlights correctly. You're you're gonna want to enhance this around here. It's it's okay. gonna be, and you have the cadmium yellow. So let me show you a stroke. I'm to the point where I could even take this home now and finish it. I mean, well, you know, with the, as long as you feel, feel comfortable like with that. it. Yeah. But what I'm wanting to get is to where everybody feels good, because we're uh, when we switch over to our other piece, we obviously we won't be revisiting it. So this one. Oopsie. Let's yeah, go. I'm happy with it. What I was going to show you, if you have your cadmium yellow, it is that it's not dry. Okay. Yeah, just use a little bit of oil on there. Did you cut? You covered it too, didn't you? Yeah, that's not what it is, but it's still. <coughs> so it should be like this. It, okay. should, it should be standing out. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to make it look like it's an outline, but you see how I'm kind of dropping some and, and, and moving along. Same with the, with this stuff. Uh -huh. It should just be on the outside, and since this is a little bit, I'm gonna see how I load my brush where I have that like loop de doop right there at the tip. Right. I, I use those little loop de doops. I make those work for me. I do. See what I'm doing? Uh -huh. And see, I, I'll have to steady my hand because unlike. Unlike Larry over there, I don't have a mall stick today. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I just love, love, love She's your gonna rub it in. I just love your setup, Larry. I gotta say, that is I one of the coolest too. setups. And that's the You know what? And I have learned a lot from teaching workshops. And I remember last year I loved I loved I learned about um, I guess it was how you are just you you how Buddy puts his oil out. In a in a candlestick. Um, what else did I take away from that? I knew a lot of folks were using the archivaline. Yeah, I know. Which actually, Coley Wilson, who's a plain air painter that I know, he um, or know of anyway, he was the one who suggested that too, because he says it expedites your drying time. And I yeah. and um, when I saw everybody here using it, I thought, well, it must be good, right? Yeah. And so I actually, I actually started buying it after. It's what I have in this little thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have too. So it, it's interesting. I end up learning just as much from you guys. It's one of the. We're all on an artistic journey, and we're all maybe in different places, but you have gleaned information from different sources, and it's Larry's, nice that y'all share it. Larry set up would probably benefit you since you do teach and putting it up. Oh there. yeah. Unless you're on. Right. Well, that's, that's the thing time. for me. I travel all over the, yeah. uh, the, all over the place with that. That's been to Vancouver, and I did demos there. And um, and it's it is quite handy, I have to say that the Edge Pro gear is definitely very good. Good stuff to have. This is looking good. I mean, your your style's a little bit different than. Yeah. But you can go back here on and do the same thing on some of your. Grass below. This, this one is here. Is that okay? Or it's okay it? because you're getting the actual definition. But remember, I said that the strokes matter. Right. The direction of your paint matters. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you in one area here. And yours looks. Yours is pretty good. I'm not going to. Let me see here. Let's just go with this one here. So what I was doing, and you've gone with these purples as opposed to like what I was using was Are like. You using the blue? I am, that's what I was using. Uh, for the underneath, the underbelly. So I'm going to take a little bit of that. 
and your burnt sienna. Yeah. And I'm going to make this gray. Actually, I want it to look a little bit more blue here. So I was using that as my base tone oh, okay. here. Okay. Uh huh. And see how I'm lifting up on the brush? Yeah. Okay. I would do that, then I wipe it off, clean a little bit. Then I'm going to go in with white. I mean, the um, King's Blue. White. And here's a little bit of a. So I'm going up here. Uh -huh. Blending up. See how my stroke, it matters because it now does, you have a, yeah. a certain directional aspect to the to what I've done here. So yeah, the purple is showing through. That's okay. like the Dollar Tree. I think it needs a um, t-shirt. It's the okay. dollar still works. So we're going to actually, we have a couple of t-shirts made in the past. We had just had one. One of my students took it to be an issue to have it done. One that had, um, well, you all going to do for lunch? Basically, it was during the, I guess, the half year when they were cutting down all the costumes. And it said, artists are known to be some of the worst, you know, they hang out with the worst companies, stay away from them. Something about no, not that. Not towards the red light. Uh, I know they're hiding on the continents. Oh, that's why yeah. not take a ride. My son, it's not was watching. No, uh, yeah, we, we were wild. watching some old and they uh, had gowns or this twilight zones. Oh, this yeah. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. and it was funny because <laughs> the, the little girl. Watch out for those cords. Are you are you a uh, alien? Yeah, are you you this? <laughs> magic guy. I didn't even get some tape for it. They were looking yeah, for okay. him. Looking for him. And he had to have been no, tagged because yet. she says, drop I can say. I fell on something in there. I need to get it. And then if I could, you rip them out. And I stood yeah. laughing and explained to Matt that that was probably. Because oh, he was trying to determine like what era or what year was the, were these Twilight Zones being Yeah. Made. All right, so now I'm just kind of highlighting a little bit in this area, mm -hmm. and, and this would be the uppermost area. So we have a definition yeah. of dark, medium, and light. And I, I went a little bit in here, and a little bit on. It really helps them with your business. I need to know. And then a little bit on the inside here, uh -huh. lighter on the inside right here. here. You've got a little bit more paint on your. It's hard for me to really make that definition show, yeah. but. If I, you know, even if I just left it like that, it would be okay because we know light's coming in from this direction. So okay. it's all right. So, oh, for some reason, but so it's coming in from that direction. Well, it's a sunset. There's glow all over the place. <laughs> we're gonna just we're not gonna get too worried it about just that. It doesn't matter. Right? What color is this? That is, um, if you it, if you look look go up and look take a look at the canvas. It's actually I use. I'm just gonna do this this one way. Because that's not the direction I would want it to do. It. I would want it to be down, but I was just going to put it down mm -hmm. and then just give it a a swoop here okay. and blend it in. Mm -hmm. Just blended it on the sides. No, that's that too purple. So I don't okay. want that. I'm going to put a little bit more blue down here because I know it's wet. Yeah, and it will. But you get the shape. Yep, you're getting a little bit more shape. <laughs> And then I'm going to put a little bit more. Because uh, I know this is also wet. There's definitely more green. How did that happen? Oh, I got that one. Mm -hmm. I thought I got the right color because it was right here on the side. Oh, yeah. I don't think I know that color. That was phthalo blue, not the green. It was my fault. See, it's funny how one thing can make that much of a difference. And if the curry pot is with a pop. I've never seen this animal. Well, good. Then this is this is your first it is. First go at it. Well, yeah. good for you. And I told her it wasn't the easiest to start with. <laughs> and now I'm just kind of cleaning off the brush because I just wanted to blend it. Okay, so now you have illusion of fullness and definition. Yeah, but that's the idea. And so when you're using your stroke, where you have your stroke going this way, this is where I would tell you to pull it down. Um, I would, what I was going to show you was when I was talking about um, Van Gogh's brush strokes. Oops. I don't even know what that is. Okay, there it is. 
Let me go in and find it through uh, um, Me on the beach. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants to see. <laughs> me on the beach 30 pounds ago. Ah, Which beach? Which me. Clearwater Beach. Mm -hmm. That's where my dad. No, no. no. Just, I don't know where to find it. But we have a home in Pensacola. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. But right now, I don't know in July and August, it's probably so hotter than you know what. No, I can imagine. Well, it's been was like there. It was constant. It's been just so hot. Do you live here? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 I'm always fixing animals. I'm getting, here somebody brings me a squirrel. I think I could fix it. Uh, this is somebody at Brandon Pinsley's work. I'll have to find it for you. But it was it's a picture of a painting where you can see the strokes so distinctly. But it is, the directions of the strokes mattered because it yeah. showed you which way the water was rolling. And it yeah. shows you which way the, the shingles on the roof are lying. Because you can't just pop mm -hmm. them in and say, because you have your dark and your light definition, you needed to be able to see the direction that everything was felt right. And so your your stroke your direction definitely matters. Look at you paint up on you know you paint up on a thing. Mm -hmm. You don't mix it up. You don't have another little blender over there that you have real time. That's awesome. I, mean, I love this system. <laughs> it's, it's like this except it's so is this also designed to put on a straight wall? Just right up on the wall. Tell me what you know. Have you been able to do any of the highlights yet? Are you getting more happy? Right. Your background's a lot lighter. Um, yeah, I think so. The one you're putting it's your bum, you can she's do not it. talked about it, but one thing. I'm going to go on with this really. Put that little highlight in the eye. Yeah. So you've got, yeah, because yeah, now you're looking at your dark value. Well, your face looks, looks great. If I was going to fix one, I, if I was going to go in and just make a highlight like this, um, because your, your, your values on your uh, plants have gotten also light. So. I don't want to change everything. I'm just going to do one right here, and then you can decide if you want to take it the rest of the way or not. I want to stick with the color that you have. Did you get anything on color Or something closer to it. I can't. I'm just going to go a little bit. And your paint's getting pretty dry. Then you'll have a more, huh? You know, so it came back over here and just got inside it here and just made these. Okay, 
Jesus Christ, I said, hey, I got me one last night. Right, I did. I was afraid that might happen. That was worth it to me. Just to go ahead and get it done. Does this not fill your bags? That's when you take it. Take it up. Oh, I don't know. it all up. Um, see, now I wonder what that was to it. Thank you, get in. So I'm not really sure. I actually need a brush, but then I let the bat the brush I wish it was true. Yeah, I wish it was true. 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 So, oops, see that press too hard there. So if I press too hard, then you can go back and throw that off. But that's that's kind of the idea there. So we got in this garage pallet to show you. Did you see it? What is it? A garage pallet. A garage pallet? It'll be something else in there. No, it is. Oh, okay. So you put your paints up here. Uh huh. You use them, spray them, or whatever you do. And these little things you put uh, foam <laughs> holes. You know the the old. Ah. Uh -huh. Then you just go that out. Yeah. Is that your clove oil? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. This is uh, uh -huh. from Barry. This is uh. I found that nice. Yeah, well, that's nice. So it actually shows you a kind of a mixing. That's his strategy. This is whose? You said berry? Okay. I'll take a picture of it. These are your hands. What did you, did you lose this finger working? Yeah. What happened to you? Well, it was a, I had a hot day. Yeah, I, I say it was. <laughs> I lost your finger. And I had to finish the hamburger before I could go. Uh, uh oh. So, hamburger. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me you did it carving or cutting wood or something. Oh, you wanted to hear that? I story. wanted to hear that story because that's you know. Uh, I think almost almost every shop teacher you ever had in school was always missing some fingers. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know they, they looked up when they were sawing something. Yeah. <laughs> but as I so I figured so this is a hamburger grinding incident. Yeah. You see, did it only take off? You still have a little bit of nail. Well, yeah, that's the way it turned out. The doctor was disappointed. That it yeah, because that makes trim. it, do you have to keep it trimmed back yeah. and it's kind of pain? Otherwise, it goes into a claw. Uh, ah, yeah. And yeah. it curls around, you know, like that eagle claw. <laughs> it's a dangerous <laughs> way. <laughs> but you're on the right track. I think you can go ahead and try it if you wanted to, because your background's a little bit lighter yeah. than some of the others. That's up to you. Just cleaning up around this. Yeah, yeah, see now I haven't gotten even that far on his no my, my nose and head yet. Um, you're ahead of me on that. Um, because you're using this as your photo reference and I'm using actually the original photo. Mm. So um, if you're following that one, you can, um, if you get your dark values in, and you've got some dark values in, but you could you even go a little bit darker if you wanted to. So you could even emphasize the, I would call this your medium tone and that's your light tone. You can go back in and put some darker tones in. Um, but, you know, the eye is pretty dark. You've got a pretty white um, reflective spot there. I would even go darker with your reflective spot. Um, and even the inside of his nose could be black instead of uh, red. But your, your, the concept of your use of your paint is correct. The colors are different than the colors that I have, but it's not, I'm not going to say it's not correct just because it's not mine, but your, the use of your colors is correct, okay? But you could, right now, it just looks like you have two tones, you could emphasize the darker tones a little bit more, and that's the only thing I would say, and I think you're doing a good job. It's different than everybody else's. Your, your work's been different all along, but I like your work, so I'm just, I just want to kind of say that again. I know I keep saying it over and over again, but but yeah, this is how I would try to do, you know, darken up your plants a little bit so that you at least have a little a little contrast in between what is hit highlighted and what is not, you know, as far as backlighting. Because you just can't see it on your background. Okay. So try that that's where I go with that. But you're doing good. Okay.
<laughs> she immediately gets out of her chair. What makes you think I was gonna even have you do that? But okay, no, you gave me a seat. I'll take it. <laughs> every advantage that I can to sit down when, the, when it's when it's presented. So you're do, you're doing like me. You're putting your pinky down and making yeah. spots. I did that on mine as well. Um, oh, is your your seat's nice and warm too, by the way. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy your your <laughs> uh, Okay. No, no, that sounded mm -hmm. weird, but that's me. Okay, sorry. I'm a weird girl. There's okay. two smaller ones over here. Oh, what are you? What were you using? Oh, is this what you were using? Boy, yeah. is this that too small? Well, it is for me because I would go nuts. Um, just because. I'm not. I'm not. I just. Now you have a lot of. Um, did you tell me you inherited a lot of your brushes? I inherited some, and then some I was like, well, I don't even know what I'm supposed to bring. That's and okay. You know, Bob Ross is, you know, like his, his painting style is just like four brushes. Yeah, and, that's, and I, I like this brush, except it's a, it's a, a synthetic sable. Um, I'm going to go with this one, but I usually would use a long, long handle. Okay. All right. For your, for your backlit on your plants, you actually did a pretty good job. How do you keep your stuff on and not stick that like that? Um, this, I'm going to show you on one of mine. I mean, I'm going to do one and I'll just show you what, how I did it. And then you can decide if you want to do it this way or if you want to continue doing how you were doing it. But what I'm doing is I'm mixing a little more of the burnt, like burnt sienna here. Okay. So you have a, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make a plant right here. I'm going to pretend there's, you can just do one here. Okay. We're just going to have another hanging down here. I'm going to put a little bit more black in it. Just emphasize it a little bit more. So say I have my my weird little plant thing. Okay, like that. Now and thank you, thank you, thank you, Linda, for bringing us the rags. Yeah, that was what just saying. That, that just <laughs> makes for She's welcome back anytime. Yes, we want that. We want that. <laughs> and the fan too, by the way. That that's her. Oh, that's you want the fan? Yes. Thank you. Sure that, uh, so thank you for for rags and fans. I'm just thank <laughs> you guys are awesome. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna see how I'm just barely tapping it in. I'm not outlining it. And you kind of did that. And you did a good job with that. But I'm. Yeah, you mean, <laughs> Sometimes I gotta put a little bit. And I'm trying to use a different kind of brush. You need a little break. I need a little break. Honey, go smoke a cigarette. <laughs> you don't even smoke. No, I need to smoke a left-handed cigarette. A left-handed cigarette? You don't know what a left-handed cigarette is? No. Buddy, do you know what a left-handed cigarette Coffee is? Left-handed cigarette. Let me think of that. Is this like a joke? No one knows this? No one knows this? Let's be marijuana. No, I <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, oh, oh that's what, okay. I was gonna you say. You all people, mom, should probably know. What that okay. Is. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks for getting up, giving me, uh, throwing me under the bus there. <laughs> <laughs> all people, because I smoke so much marijuana. Now that we're online and everybody can hear that, that's not true. And you know that's not true. There goes your paycheck. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, it's a good thing I work for myself. <laughs> Well, I never heard that word before, but I was going to say that, but I was going to say it online and I was oh, going to be loud about it and I was not going to. <laughs> yeah. So. I well, honestly, I learned that from my grandfather. Has your grandfather <laughs> smoked a lot of weed? No, but he, he was talking about those left-handed cigarettes that they brought back after going to war. Yeah. You know, that stuff they could grow up in the hills of Virginia. <laughs> so what, what war are we referring to? Vietnam? Uh, no, no. Uh, well, it grew a lot of weed. It grew a lot of weed in Vietnam. They smoked weed in World War II. Yeah, evidently because he had stuff from it. I guess.
or try to do before when I was talking about the ethereal looking light, it, since you're obviously your background's wet too because you're doing the same little spots as I did on mine, I was taking a little bit of straight on white with a lot of oil and you're, I'm trying to work with the one you have here. And then, like I said, I'm going to steady my hands. Matt, how many hands. people's watching? Matt? Oh, how many people's watching? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, how many people's watching oh, after okay. that incident? Uh, well, I did cut it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they started talking about me. Um, He's trying to keep his mother. <laughs> but right now, we have four. Oh, okay. okay. We have four of them. But, uh, we don't know who they are, though. No, I can't tell. <laughs> well, if you're watching, call out your name. Are you back on? Yeah, yeah. It just, I faded out. Okay. <laughs> YouTube will, like, demonetize your channel. Not kidding. Okay, see now I don't know these things. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm, I am bad about not having a filter. Me Anybody too. who knows me knows well, I'm not what used you to see is what you don't <laughs> do. And, you know, like I said, I can talk about my own story and keep my son awake, and I'm okay with that. She snore last night. I prefer people like that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, um, yeah, I prefer to just, like, do what I, you know, what's out there. I have no okay, filter. So I was trying to make this a little bit softer here, and I'm then sure. you can go in with your yellows right up to that this part and then what i was doing i switched over to kind of an orange color out there. and since your your color is a little bit uh, more neutral than warm i am going to well we're going to just try this and see how it works i was going in with orange but see we're going to have to change that on here just a little bit um I was just trying to make that so it's so it looks like there's a gradual amount of heat. We we went from this orangey color to the yellow, which is pretty bright heat. And I guess in the sense when you think of it this way, uh, white is the it is probably the whitest hot, right? It's the hottest color. I mean, you can be you talk about white heat, right? We, yeah, that's what this kind of is here. Um, that's the idea. Um, and that's what we're, you're, if you're using this, that, that's the idea. This color should be a little bit darker, your dark value here. And I'm going to go in with this. It's uh, I'm go with these two colors here, which is, I'm going to go in with your sienna, a little bit of that purple here, a little bit of oil. So where did you get that? Is that just a little, a little, um, Flower pot handle. I mean, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so just kind of going, mm -hmm. going back down like this. So then you get that just kind of that neat definition of like the wrinkles in his neck. You could even you know, bring that down a little line. bit here <laughs> on YouTube. That's better than taking notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Then remember, you can go back on line. Yeah. Check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Since I'm doing that now, I can tell people. Please subscribe. Is it free? Right now it is. <laughs> Till I, I figure out how to, you know, I, I'm always, what's funny is I get people asking me all the time from different places in the United States or in the world for that matter. Um, do you have, are you teaching online? Because I yeah. have somebody wanting to take lessons and I was like, well, no. I, I don't, but it doesn't mean I, I'm not interested in learning. I just don't know what to do. I, I don't know how to do it. Of course, I have a son who knows everything, so um, but he's going to help me. Sometimes you can take just a clean brush if you need to, to fade something down and not you're not adding paint. You're just really manipulating the paint that's on there, but you can blend it out a little bit. Um, and see, I'll constantly, if anybody knows me, I have white lip themed. I am like this. This is me. I always have a towel. That's why I'm so blessed to have people like Linda who brings me really awesome rags. Um, I've warmed up yours a little bit. The rag. Because oh, there's some very neutral. Yeah, I got a little And you still oh, can't right 
um, I just wanted to show you in this area what was going on. So like if you were going to change the more spicy this, like, that it's dangerous. I, I know, I'm showing you this. I'm it's showing you this. We lose it. <laughs> this is interesting. I like it. You you, you have, have the time. I was going to fix it. You have the concept of what I was trying to show about you've got your dark and your middle and your light tone. You okay. were doing what I was asking you to do. So, you know, the structure's a little bit off, and this kind of goes up like this. So some of your dark value would probably, let's see, get it, go up like this. So if I was going, you know, you asked me if I, if I could fix it. You did it right. Now, but I'm just going to emphasize it more. This is what I was doing. I was going up on this stroke. This is my middle tone. Mm -hmm. And same here. As this comes down. Then I might even darken it up just a tad bit. Uh, I'm going on a different tangent simply because I picked up the wrong color. So I, I thought it was French ultramarine. So instead of going French ultramarine and burnt sienna, I'm going purple with yellow ochre. I'm still getting a, a very similar type gray color. Sometimes you just go with what you end up having on your, you know, but going with the concept of using compliments. Yeah, what color is it going on? And I will, I and I will take I complementary colors to make awesome grays all the time. That's I'll really what try. I prefer to do. Try. So I'm going back underneath yeah, this boundary. There's a lot of thinners up this way. And <laughs> emphasizing the dark values you here. Stay home. <laughs> yeah. To get out for a second. Well, no, a lot oh, of them go to church. Oh. You know, you have so many turtles in here. Yeah. yeah. There is no way. See, I got it here. It was half one time. It's awesome. They offer. And you can go to the Nile at another Baptist church. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. up. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come back under these, this part, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you have a dark area too. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to go in with the, in my brush, wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe and Going in with the, you know, you have this neat color here. The middle tone. And I'm still using this brush, even though this would not be my choice, but I'll just use the one. The outline, you know, the yellow. Uh huh. Wiping, 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 wiping more. And I'm just kind of hitting it in between those two areas where they mesh, so it kind of blends a little bit. And then I'm gonna try. <laughs> Since you already have wet paint down here, you were doing the right idea. If I put the white in here like this, I'm going to wipe it off now because I'm using the wrong kind of brush. I just want to. But again, I'm lifting up because that's the way the hair would grow. That's the way this is, the motion of you know, the, the, this direction is going. Oh, yeah. And I'm cleaning the brush off. Sometimes it's that. It doesn't look like you have that much oil. Well, there's there. There's a, I will just take that area right here where I just kind of hit it. So it doesn't have that. Like you, can, you can't, it's not going to be that strong. Now you can see there's a dark value here and here. So I'm going back in and I didn't even get paint on here. If you're in a painting class, don't expect to get paint on you. In the wrong place. <laughs> well, you got yellow on them. I didn't. I didn't put yellow on mine. I was just gonna get your. Of this space here. 
and you can see that there's like a like a highlighted area here, and I'm not sure what color. Let me show you this color here because we've got it. Uh, what is that color? How do you keep your colors from drying out in the night? I put saran wrap. I, that's what I did, and then anybody's welcome to, you know, to, well, I guess it won't matter now, but that's what I was using, is just saran wrap, I was just leaving them out. Sometimes I was, you know, having to reapply. But that's, you know, that's kind of the idea of that. Um, with the, the horns, what I was doing, um, trying to work with your brushes. I was going in with a pretty intense purple first, almost with the black in it. So if you start off on the base, on the, uh, on the antlers, and I'll do one area and I'll let you do the rest. Then you have the spiral. Um, the spiral, I don't want to change it too much, but the spiral kind of And I would go in and highlight. And I was going in with a lighter color. Let's see if I can just go in here with a little bit. Taking the same color I used, just lightening it up a little bit. See, I'm going to do it to yours too. I don't. I'm sorry. I just made that mark. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got so much going on here. It's really hard to see it. Let's see here. I can do it with white. Your white has yellow in it. That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. I've got some more white over there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to get it. Whatever you do, it'll be so much better than what it was. Not necessarily. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> if I can't get. You know, it, it's a. Uh, oh, I did not see that before. Well, I, I don't that know that it was really emphasized, but your antlers are your horns are thicker than mine, so I'm just kind of doing this. They can start off that way. It's just that when you like start working with them and make mistakes, I, I get it. I get it. It's like when I do a cabin. All my cabins start out small and they end up being like a giant farm. It's a mansion. Yeah. It's a cabin yeah. mansion. Yeah. Oh, they, they make, oh, North Carolina, man, you can make a lot of money with those cabin mansions. Okay, so we're getting the idea. We're getting that spiral. Oh. That's what's beautiful about these horns that they have. They're just, and they're just one of the species that have, that I, d I have a very large piece, and we'll show you at the end. We'll do a little slideshow. Maybe Matt can show you some of my art. Um, oh, yeah, you want to show me the leopard and the elephant. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think, do I have any elephants? I need to do some elephant. I have, uh, I have leopards. I have one that's still at the studio now, and it's a big one. It's a five foot by four foot piece. I really want to learn to do bears. Well, I've got a bear in my she studio. Bear I, in do the woods. I have a I do <laughs> have I do have a bit a bear in the woods. I also have a lot of bears that I do for my galleries in North Carolina because they can't they I'm very they blessed sell they sell quick. them they sell them like crazy in North Carolina yeah. for me. If you could get them up in Gatlinburg they'd go like crazy too. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Southern Highlands? I'm Where sorry? Southern Highlands? I'm not, I'm not in that market yet. Um, I have gone to the Grayson Highlands. They have five different stores in Gatlinburg. And but that, that's the idea. Good. You can probably get in there and work them a little Is bit. Is it there. all the same person that owns on? Well, well it's a guild. Oh, okay. Screw it up for me. Yeah. Just trying to kind of. They did really well for me when I was trying to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. 
What about the go eye? around and demonstrate. The yeah. eye is actually very high in its head. Your ear is, now your ear is back behind the horns. We could put this ear, should be out like in here. Um, the eye would be, It's pretty straight through under here. You're going to have a little bit of, um, I, know that I think this is brown. I'm always trying to figure out what everybody's colors are. We know that we have colors down in front of us, and when somebody calls out a color, and this is what we're seeing, and but everybody sees colors a little bit differently, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm not going to um, say, oh, well, if you don't do it my way, it's wrong. Okay. The reason is you may see it this way, and there's not to say that the way you see it is wrong, um, because we. That it's the way we see it, right? It, it, it's not right or wrong. It's just it, it may be different. So, as long as you're 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 practicing the normal, um, you know, you're learning something from this course. You're actually um, using the paint in the right direction. You're and you're getting your values. 
Yeah, I can I can probably say something if someone's values aren't correct and say, yeah, you need to change that value or this needs to be darker or lighter. But if you see things of maybe a little bit more purple or a little bit more um, uh, blue over purple, or you see, I see a lot of greens in here. You know what? I who am I to argue if you actually see greens? Because um, you may, <laughs> you may, and it doesn't mean that. If that's how you paint it, it's going to be wrong. Um, the eye is kind of an amazing thing, and uh, you know, they, there's a, there's, I forget what the word is, but some people have more rods and cones in their eyes than others. You know, people with very few are colorblind. And then there's the other direction, yeah. where you can have a lot of cones, rods and cones, and you probably see colors that others don't doesn't mean what you see is wrong, it just means that you see it differently. Okay. So I just kind of say that every now and then because I think a lot of people get kind of hung up on the fact that their colors may be a little bit different than the ones I picked. But if you're using your the concept of uh, your values, then you're going to get it. Then, this, then it's going to come into focus. And, and, and here, I mean, you can see I just kind of switched your colors a little bit, and I tried to stay more in the palette zone that you're here, but I got I got it a little bit too warm. Um, and I say mine may not be correct for how you went in the direction you were going. Now it's easy correction, and you I'm leaving some of the values because your values were correct, like through here. So now we have a little bit more of the definition of the animal's face. Um, and you can you know this this nostril you're going to bring it down a little bit more. I'll let you work on that, but you're you're off to the right you're off to the right start. So when you are actually off into a, a different, it's not a start. We're kind of coming in on a home stretch, aren't we? It is. The <laughs> it is the home stretch. But you want to go ahead and emphasize your highlights. You're going to have to when you're doing your highlights on the. Um, what I was doing was going in straight with yellow at first, like this. Not quite, not quite outlining it, but you'll see. I'll, I'll mess it up here in a minute for you. <laughs> and then I'm going to go That's in over here with a little bit of the white, right up to the next, you know, next to it like this. And then using some of the oil, blend it out like this. See how I'm all of a sudden I'm diffusing it. It's becoming that that soft look of, you know. And I'm trying to blend it into your back down a little bit. That looks good. And see how I how I steady my arm? I put my arm on some too. So I have a little bit more control back to put more. Oh, okay. And then this one. So you can do that underneath here too. You got this one. But, oh shoot. I'm spreading it into the yellow a little bit. Yeah. And that was what I was Trying to like convey here. That could be so perfect. That's, That's why I'm able to go back in no. and it just kind of fuzz it out a little bit. You can use some of your orange, yeah. but it's everywhere. Yep. Um, and go on this side of and it. And that color on the iPad is better than yeah. yeah. I'm just kind of softening that out. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, what else do I need to work on? Anything? Just do the same concept through the rest of the animal okay. at this point, and then what you did here. Okay. Yeah, your your you. highlights look really pretty. I like your highlights, and, and your and, and your horse look good. Thank you, thank you. Buddy, I don't know that there's not anything I'm really gonna fix. I know you got out of your chair for me. <laughs> you need to I appreciate it. that because <laughs> I like to sit in everybody's chair. No, um, it warmed up for you. The highlights on the plants. Um, I think what you're doing here is fine. I'm not going to get on here much, and, and okay. I think you actually did really well through here. You can do a little bit more, um, but like you haven't really done anything on this. Well, I'll let me show you how like, if I went in here with a little bit more white, like I did here, I need to, I should have known what chair to tell you what the plant is called. I'm going down my arm. Well, it's getting that way now. 
But it's above the black line. Mm -hmm. Remember, you've so got that book? curve. Oh, okay. okay. So you've got yeah. that curve mm -hmm. right, right above the black line. And since you're the one who introduced me to the word mm -hmm. that I've already forgotten how to say. Is this your Jesus or shirt? Uh huh. But that's yeah. 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 I just never thought about it. And then you know. 
there's you'll go with your, your <laughs> right now you've got that you know what to do yeah here's what's really good buddy well sure here's what's really good it does oh good thank you thank you are you going to the very first and then get yes okay. yes yes yeah. Well, I'll just have her, well, I'll get everybody's names. Okay. And I'll have Matt draw. Okay. Okay, let's see where you're at. Oh, your your plants look really pretty. Well, thank you. Yeah. Happy? I am. Happy Mama? But you're outlining your animal. Don't outline it. Uh, oh, she'll come back around and get Oh, I'm feeling the fan. Where is that? Right there. Well, that one's yeah, not on the I thought there was a big fan. There, there is. Probably it turned it off. Buddy spot. It turned it off. Oh, okay. you turned it off. Okay. You know I turned it off so I could hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, so I can turn it back on. No, oh, no. We can, we can uh, move it so it's not in your ear. Yeah. We can move it so it's near mine. <laughs> <laughs> Although Matt would probably say no, Mom. Well, we have too much feedback. All of your stuff would probably go so well. I know. Matt would say, Mom. <laughs> so when you're doing All right. Get out of here. I love I love how everybody's got their thing. Oh, would you look at that new I told you you didn't get what your you know? look at that. Yeah. Maybe maybe one day and zoom in on that. When I get to be, I'll 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 be able to do that. Um I'm gonna take a little bit of white girlfriend. Um, and I'm going to show you how I was doing the little ethereal look here. Now I'm going to do it in this one area of the neck and you can go back and fix what you're doing. I'm just going to go ahead and, and basically outline just like you did here. And then I'm going to go in with my brush with mostly oil, very little paint, and try to blend it out. So since your, your background is a little bit wet still, which thankfully we can do this, see how I'm just kind of softening at that look, mm -hmm. okay? But I want it to blend away to where it disappears, so that you cannot see it anymore. And I'm going to go back in, add some more. So we're going to say, oh, okay. look at the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, you know, even yes. when you just disperse it so that it doesn't look like shape. a shape. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm wiggling it back and forth. I don't know what it looks like. She doesn't want it to look like a line. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going in closer to the animal. Okay. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just really okay. basically okay. touching his head that onto the side of the sides here. Okay. And again, you don't, have to, to, uh, no. uh -uh. you don't have to outline it. You can just spot it on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning I put a spot here, a spot there. Now that feeling. Now there's not really an outline. It's 
it's not like you're looking at this crazy like outline that's going on here. Um, I think your structure looks pretty good. Now here's another example. You've got your dark values here. I'm going to go ahead and just go backwards for a second. Uh -huh. I think your, your plants look pretty good, so I'm not going to have to go there. So here um, you have this, this, <laughs> this going down here. Really dark like values dark values. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you only have mm -hmm. the dark parts. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yeah. Except when I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this right on down here. So here we are. I'm going to go backwards this time. I'm going to go in with your orangey color. You see how I'm barely pressing. I'm just letting that, I'm letting the brush do the work. And I think oh, yeah. that's one of the biggest problems I'll see people that, you know, they're, they're bending the hell out of the brush because they're just pushing it so hard. I think there's, you've got to be able to let it do the work. Here you can see you've outlined it way too much. So if you're going to fix that, you'll still want to be able to see your darker value. So let's go in with and, and, and put the orange back in here. Let's put orange in here right up next to that line. Yeah. So it won't look it's like it's just an absolute, like, mm -hmm. hot, you know. And then go in with your yellow above it. It's just kind of spot it in. Do not outline it. And then go above that. Bang, 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 bang,
that and some of that. And right above it. And pull my brush off again. Just grab some oil. And make some magic in here. I can see it's too much. I'm going to wipe, 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 wipe. Do you see the idea of what's, what's mm -hmm. happening here? Okay. Then you know where to go. Your plants look good. I'm not even touching those. But if you wanted to, you could put little spots of white mm -hmm. in there just to make it have a little, oops, a little like it's glistening a little bit. Like okay. it's, it's, because you can see the little, yeah. yeah. I, I got it. it. Okay, I need help with my, my Okay. I'm too nervous. <laughs> well, part of the problem is you're, you're sitting and you're, it's the stance that you've got, you're so far away from what you're working on, mm -hmm. where you're going to need to either move it closer to you, or let's just move, let's do this. Because this is one of those kind of the parts where you really kind of have to have it closer to you. I'm going to move this out of the way. Oops, sorry, honey. I'm going to move this sucker, sucker in. And then you're going to be like, oh, wait, I can do this now. It's now that it's all right up on me here. <laughs> so your antler. Let me get familiar with the color and your mediums are over here. These are yours here? The whole idea of that form is it start off with a kind of a dark color. So I'm grabbing some of the purple, some black, let's grab some brown here. And make our basic shape of the form. Now it's they're always dark under on the other hand. So I'm just going to say, okay, here's our horn, it goes up, it goes out, and follow your shape that you did, but it gets wider as you get closer to the to the skull. Okay. So it gets it tapers. And then there's one right next to it. But it runs right close to it so much. We'll just go ahead and separate it a little bit so you can so you can see it. I think it was um, Heather was saying, yeah, they started yeah. out this way, but then they got fatter. And I'm doing the same thing, Heather, just saying. All right, so here we have our basic horn, horn thread. Okay. There is a dark, a darker area. The underneath of these horns is very dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this black in. And the base on the underneath and do the spirals. Um, I, on my painting, made the spirals a lot more pronounced, but I am going to do it a little bit more like what we do. I know it doesn't look like anything yet, but we're going to go back in light now. And we're going to use this color that you have right here, which is pretty, pretty nice, because we already know that we've got wet, wet paint, right? So it's, whatever we do is going to blend. So we're going to start on here in the middle. <laughs> I, I should be getting pretty good at this now. Yeah, I feel like I've done, a, I've done quite a few horns, but yeah. you know what? They're not easy. I understand that. Um, I do find their I do find horns really fascinating right now, and like it I said, I good. lately have done yeah. a lot of animals with uh, with horns, uh, spiral horns. You know, I just I just did a ram piece. It's uh, it's in North Carolina Oops. now. I don't have it at the studio, but I did I'll a ram. the one that's about. Uh, 
trafficking animal. Oh, um, the angel? The angel. I love, love one. Thank you. I actually have a gentleman that's very interested in that. It was, um, he was he was looking for more African American, you know, art featuring African Americans because his his wife is black and he and he was just saying that that he's having trouble, you know, they, they have trouble finding work like that. Okay. And he's very interested in it. I hope he will buy it. Um, it's stunning. It's stunning. It is really Thank you. you know I should check that one out. I'm, I'm going to put a plug in for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you have it on your okay? It's on my, it's on the internet. Um, it's on my website. It's uh, on my Instagram. I think, it, and even in my Instagram, because it's, it's a new piece, I have to, you know, there is a sensor. Sometimes you're censored. Um, I mean, like on Facebook. I don't know that I've been censored with that piece too much, although I have been censored with some of my other new art that I do. Why do they censor? Well, they don't want to see breasts, so evidently. Oh. <laughs> and uh, which yeah. is unfortunate because uh, we didn't have those things and we should have. <laughs> <laughs> but it truly is fun. Yeah, yeah. They've censored on the internet where a woman has had a mastectomy and they've come back and tattooed. Yeah. Uh -huh. and that's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is. But. And they don't want like women that have bilateral mastectomy. I mean, that's a fact of life. Well, there's nothing there then. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I'm like, do I have to wear a top now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. Linda's a, a survivor. Yeah, she told me this morning. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do, I mean, is I'm going to take your, oh, your small round. You know, if it's a place since it's honestly right, a little right bit there. of purple. <laughs> I'll have the white. I think this might be fine. I'm going to put my scary thing down. I know, I've never had it. It made me burn my eyes. I need a purple. The antler on the other side, you know, we do have another antler and it's called Um, I don't know, it's interesting. I used to work in uh, cancer research <laughs> before I, before I did this, and I remember, you know, and I used to work with laboratory animals all the time. And some species of animals, I don't care what you do, they're going to get cancer. That if a rat lives long enough, it yeah. will get lumpy and die. That's, That's just how, how it is. People are too. If they and enough, they um, and yeah. I'll never forget. You know, of course, on on your um, pack of uh, sweet and low, they will always say. Um, this has been known to cause cancer in lighter prey animals. And I always kind of giggle a little bit because life, life causes cancer in laboratory animals. So um, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they shouldn't put that on there, but I always, because I work with them, um, I, I've always had lumpy, lumpy rats. Um, they always have lumpy. What kind of trees for those? Well, I didn't find out what the actual name of these plants are. <laughs> I, I guess I, I should look that up for you. Um, I was going to look that up. I'll just use your example. But what I'm trying to do here, honey, is I'm trying to put the black back underneath the actual spiral. Because if you look, you're going to have the middle tone, and yeah. you'll have that black right underneath. What do you think? The lightest part. Are you so sure? Oh, oh wow. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. That's so hard. Well, and, yeah. and, and it's the burnout rate on it is very high. Um, so you're going to find it to let that dry a little bit. Your, 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 I think your plants look great. Um, I think you could bury your your highlights a little bit. And I mean, like, you know, if you, if you say if you read this one here, you can, like you said, Drop a little bit of color, you can see it's not outlined yet. just kind of drop it a little bit. Moving yeah. along. It's you try to keep it buried. Because when we when we highlight too much and it looks like we outline, it looks beauty. It looks like that's what we're doing. So now I'm just taking a little bit of white. And I might just hit a little spot here and there. 
It's not that you highlighted it too much. You probably go back and highlight it some uh, more. You just gotta vary your stroke. Strong. So see how it's a little bit more varied. It's not like it. and the same when you're doing your highlight on your animal. I'll show you here. I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of oil. Don't do that. Do you have any more pictures on it? Uh, say I'm going to highlight color. I'm just going to go around a little bit here and I'm going to add some oil. Then I'm going to just move it out to the, to the pink, spreading it out a little bit, back to the salt mines. Your horns. Did she do your horns? No. I don't uh, think I did. Maybe a little bit. What do I do? I'll have to I'll redo mine when I get home because I did them straight instead of curved a little bit. So it looks like that at first. Right. So it's just taking the point, I'm just sure making sure it doesn't look like it's outlined. You don't think there's I'm a I'm spreading it out so it just looks like light, okay? It will be a bit. Then I'm going to go in with your yellow, next no, to it on the inside. Oh, oh, that's, that's just uh, thinner. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can see I'm not outlining it, so it's like I'm just going to tell you to do plants. I think you do pretty up here, then you just have to add the uh, whites. Um, I'm going with, I'm not really changing your structure. Oh, where did you get that? Yeah. Did you make that? I did. I sure did. I did. I did. I did. I'll have it go and go on this little bunch. On the other side of the, of the white, of the yellow. I'm not very much. Okay, you're just kind of pulling that into the bottom a little bit. Remember, let your tip of your brush do the work. Don't mm -hmm. push too much. Mm -hmm. I te it's almost like I'm teasing it into the to the animal. And then you can go back in. So like <laughs> my my color's a little bit different than yours. But like somebody didn't see somebody. Barbara probably did. I didn't call it this morning. Um, I got to go call my best friend. Like here too, you you'll wanna. You, you, that's the idea. Now you're you want a little bit lighter, and I'm not sure what color. I'm just trying to take this color out because I I went with a color that's not going with what you did, and I don't want to change what you've done. Is what I'm trying to say. If that's what you're seeing. I'll respect that, but it's just a little bit different than what I the selection the color. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to blend it in so that it looks like it. But you get the idea. And so you'll need to go back up and add some of your lights into this. I don't want to make it that, you know, too, too far out. But you can change that. You can see that there's that the light there. Yeah. You got it though? Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. I want to get this guy done so we can jump into the other guy. It's 1208. I'm just keeping track of time for us. It's funny, I'm looking at mine and going, oh my gosh, everybody else has theirs so much further along than me. <laughs> it's like, oh goodness. <laughs> As, as 
as uh, Buddy says, back to the salt mines. Okay. Now, like I said, I want to get I want to get through with this this impala, so that we can. Uh, I want to finish him as much as I can. So that we'll be ready to finish the grass and jump into our um, finish our flamingo. We got flamingos to do here, folks. Now I'm just I'm just going in with more detail in some of the areas that need need to have some detail. Um, I'm trying to have my my daughter was texting me. She uh, she's like I said she's going back to to London. And now she's looking for as much work as she can get. Um, so I posted that she's looking for any art, artwork. Um, so she just got two two good jobs that are dropping it off at my studio tomorrow for her. So anybody out there listening, if you're needing some uh, artwork done by a by a uh, starving artist wanting to get back to London, my daughter Hannah is looking for some work. Anybody who knows Hannah's work is, I mean, she's, she's amazing at what she does. A lot of attention to detail. Her concentration in her undergrad was uh, um, drawing concentration. Um, she's got a really interesting style of work. So, like I said, if you're needing some neat artwork at a really affordable prices and somebody who's really motivated, uh, contact, my, contact me and I can get you in touch with my daughter. How is she on Impalos? How is she on a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'm not <laughs> sure. She, uh, yeah, you, you want to get your Impala finished? <laughs> now, you know you can do this. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah, is, what is she, she on specialize in? Anything? She is actually, um, does amazing figurative work. Um, she's been known to design tattoos for people. Okay. She, uh, she's a drawer. She doesn't paint so much, although she is a good painter. Uh, a friend of mine in New York actually bought her very first oil piece, oil painting, um, and it's beautiful. She, but she prefers drawing. That's really what, and she'll use occasionally watercolor, to uh, and watercolor and ink, on some of her drawings to emphasize color when when needed. But um, she really, really likes doing uh, drawing. So have you got any tattoos she's designed? Has she? Um, I know oh, she me. did a. Oh me? <laughs> Actually, my daughter's wearing one that I <laughs> that I designed. Um, I was uh, visiting my father in uh, in Clearwater, Florida, when she was she was studying in England at the time, and she was going into London for a tattoo. And she mm -hmm. says, "Mom, quick! I need you to do a bee for me." Mm -hmm. Now. I love insects, okay? I love all, all living things, but bees in particular. I just think bees are wonderful, especially honeybees or just any kind of bee. The whole culture of a bee is amazing because it's a female run, run uh, organization. organization. <laughs> it's run um, with, you know, they, they, they work for common good. You know, they, they work together to get things done. I just, I think bees are amazing. I, that's all. I've seen some Is one female and 10,000 workers? I'm sorry? One female and 10,000 workers? Well, the <laughs> females are all, I mean, even the workers are females. You have one queen bee that's, that is your bee for reproduction. Uh, she's the only uh, one that can reproduce. And actually, the, they decide which one's going to be the queen by the, how they feed it. They feed them um, the bee the royal jelly. Whichever baby gets to be the lucky one gets the royal jelly, and she's the one who becomes the queen, and that's how they reproduce. There are males 
uh, but they're only around for breeding, and that's then they die. <laughs> Cause, you know, but um, all the worker bees that you see, you know, pollinating flowers and working are all female. They're just sterile. But anyway, so Hannah had asked me to design a bee, and she asked me to uh, just write something that is, you know, meaningful. And I'm like why? She goes, well, it's going to be my tattoo. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to write? Just a few words. <laughs> so I said, be fearless. Mm -hmm. oh, I like and uh, she has a tattoo on her chest that is my tattoo with my handwriting. Now, and so I thought it was going to be, you know, a B. I'm yeah. thinking it's going to be little, right? Mm -hmm. She has this thing right on her chest. It's huge. And I'm like, oh, Hannah, that's huge. She goes, mom, it's my favorite. It's my favorite tattoo. I've seen them for butterflies where they do the shadows and underneath. And oh, I mean, it's amazing what they're they what they're are able to do. Yes. It's uh, crazy. Okay, let me get in here. Work on the front. We're moving around, moving around. What are you doing now? I'm I'm good. I'm still highlighting my uh, my animal. Oh. Okay. Everybody else is a lot further along than I am. <laughs> I know. I, I really need to step it up a little bit. Yeah. You wouldn't think that goes a lot into a tattoo, but I've seen some. My daughter has some beautiful ones, actually, and she's designed a lot of her own tattoos that she has. Um, on her back, She ha and she ha doesn't add color on hers. Hers are all shaded and, and black and white, or, you know, light colors. We had a guy come in, and he had to have bypass surgery and he had this magnificent tattoo all over his chest and they had to get a plastic surgeon in to sew him up because of his tattoo and line it up perfectly. Oh, oh wow. Who would have thought? I know it. But that tattoo was something else. So anyway, yes, my daughter is looking because her she'll have her a lot of her education, the actual tuition will be covered through her AmeriCorps. Uh, she is an AmeriCorps Vista. Uh, that's the domestic version of the Peace Corps. Oh, okay. And she works uh, for the McKinney Arts Center in uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee. And um, so through, through her AmeriCorps work, she will get a, a, you know, a pretty good lump sum at the end of her service. And she'll have gained valuable experiences working, you know, through the art department, through this oh, yeah. nonprofit. But um, she can only, you know, her she can she has to have her housing expenses made, and I don't think that that's covered through AmeriCorps. So she's going to have to start making funds, and she got accepted into the school. Now she's got to figure out how to pay for it. <laughs> You know, sometimes we do things a little bit backwards, but it usually you have to you have to do it. You have to go through the process to make it happen. So, hopefully, she'll get her monies, and so with the help of other folks wanting to have work, she'll. But she's got to get it together by uh, January. And um, so. You know that tattoo I was telling you about that I want to do? Yes. Maybe I can hire the. Because I think Hannah would like that. Yeah. Oh, she loves tattoos. Yeah. Ha contact Hannah. I'm serious. She will. She would love to do that. Does she do like people sketches? She does. Okay. I She's. She would like, would like to have a, like an old photograph of two people who never got to meet each other. Huh. Sketch Yeah. Definitely hit her up because she's. She does very well with people. She does, a, you know, where she's done like pet, put pet portraits. They've been, um, like I said, she doesn't paint them. She generally does like um, pencil drawings. Um, 
of, you know, for pet portraits and people portraits she's done. Uh, sometimes you'll add uh, pen and ink, you know, that type of work. Like I said, she, her concentration is drawing. And I'm just, I'm going back through my, uh, my Impala and I'm adding some of the uh, lighter colors. Highlights and low lights and and I, you know, a lot of the colors we already mixed up earlier, so I'm not really changing it up too much. I'm just lightening it up. So now we've got to finish our other guy. Because the flamingo is looking up his butt, according to Faye's mm -hmm. husband. <laughs> And we've got to work on that too. Although he is kind of that's how they that's how these guys eat, you know. <laughs> this sounds kind of strange. Not necessarily looking up their butt, but I mean with their head down. With their head down and they swing it side to side and they sieve through everything and it with that specially that amazingly designed bill of theirs. I think it's truly amazing. All the adaptations God's created through animals. Come oh, on, Sue, give me that, give me that. Is anybody talking to us at all, Matt? Mm, not yet. Not yet? If anybody's watching, give me a shout out just to say hello. Just tell me what you're thinking. Are you? Love to hear from you. Are they shy, these people watching? Or they're not watching on YouTube. Oh. Oh. Alrighty. Now I see a lot of folks that are putting their shine on their animal's eye. Um, and I love doing the shiny part of an animal's eye, believe me especially when it's about their eyes. In this case, it's really not. I will put a little bit of a shine in this guy's eye, but it's, I don't go, I almost never go white. It's usually a, a light blue or a turquoise or something else. Um, and even when I do it, when it is about the eyes, I am very careful not to go too white. That's because the eye reflects the sky when they're out. Yeah, usually it's, it's whatever the light is around them. I've and of course I love, that's the one part I love most about doing animals or people. I love the eye. The eye yeah, is the I fun place. Too. And, um, but we, a lot of, a lot of artists will do it the wrong color. And I think they, they, they get excited about the idea and it just comes out a little bit off.
I'm adding a little bit of lighter, warmer colors on mine because that's what I'm seeing here this time. Okay, I'm going to have to get into highlighting him too. Let's do that top of the head. I'm going to go in here with yellows above him. Paint that brush off, and I'm gonna just put oil on. And I'm gonna buzz out, fuzz out my highlights here, my uh, where I backlit them. Cause you know, did I tell you I was backlighting this guy today? No. No? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna backlight the Impala. All right. I guess I should have told you yeah. that that was my plan all along, but. And as for those watching at home, that's all we've been talking about. Over and over and over. And I'll go back in and start. I've got that little sloppy on his profile, so I'm going to go in and... and a little bit more in there. That's better. I like that. I'm going to put a little bit more highlight around my aunt, my horns a little bit, just because. So if I get that, here's that challenge: Can I do it with a steady hand without putting my pinky down? I don't think so. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Okay, I'm going to go back in through the rest of the body, get my highlights in, because I want to be able to skip back over to our flamingo. doing just more and more highlights and I'm just doing what I was showing y'all. I'm just going back over now. I put the, put the yellow highlights, the cadmium yellow light in. Now I'm going over with a little bit of white. Um, again, I'm just kind of popping it in there a little bit. My brush is a little bit dirty so I'm going to need to clean it a little bit thick. I really need to change my rag out. It's not like I don't have a ton of them now. Okay. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. I do have to say, y'all have been an awesome group too. This has been a fun, a fun group. I think that's one of the best parts of this doing, doing what I do is getting to meet so many neat people. People that are enthusiastic about learning something. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Alright, we're getting it. Moving through it, moving through it.
some more dark values back in. Anybody else know, who's been my student knows I do something what I call seesawing. I'm sure there's probably a real word for it. But for me, seesawing just means going back and forth between dark and light values. Um, if, I've, if I've hit an area and I've gone too far, I may go back and add some back in. Um, dark values, light values, back and forth, back and forth. It's, it's a dance I'm constantly working with here. going to add some more grass soon. I just want to give you a, giving you a heads up because there will be more grass being added. I haven't had, heard it too much huffing lately. That's good. No. That's right. Go ahead, get your huffs out. <laughs> Big heavy sighs. When you get a chance, I would like you to do me a favor. Um, if we can get a piece of paper and write everybody's names on it, um, we're going to draw here in a little bit for who gets who gets to go home with the flamingo and who gets to go home with the impala. How about you start to say who gets to go home? Yeah, no. <laughs> You're trapped. You're yeah. trapped. You may not leave. He has threatened us all morning. Right. Well, you know. He said he's going to lock the door on it. Well, if you'd been better, then, you know, <laughs> maybe we wouldn't have to. I'm just kidding you. We'll see where I can find it. Okay, thanks, Matt. I'm sure there's an app on your phone. <laughs> that does. <laughs> could do a drawing like that.
He found some. Yeah. There's also a printer who business center. Oh. So mm -hmm. he's printing. Well, there you go. But now we know. How many people we know? Well, just put everybody so you just put a name down for Amanda and Linda, Buddy, Sandra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I hate it when that happens. Let me get this out of here. Every now and then, because I keep wiping on the same space of a rag that's got a lot of the same paint. You don't shape my eye because it was a little off. Closing that off. I'm getting ready to put some more grass in the foreground. Is that what you mean? Yeah. It's getting ready to happen. It's not happened yet. I put some darker values back in. Now I use a, I'll use a stroke that's very, it, it, it's a nice stroke for doing fur and blending at the same time. And I, you don't always have to have a furry stroke, you know, everything doesn't have to look like it's all hairy, that the hair is a certain length. A lot of animals, you take a horse for example, looks quite light, quite smooth, but yet it has fur, yes? So you have to know, so oftentimes I'm using a stroke that where my brush doesn't even leave the canvas. When I have it on there, I'm moving it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just continually moving it up in the direction that I know the fur is growing. But I'm not necessarily creating each strand of fur. Um, that's another mistake a lot of people make. There is times when you want to have that rich detail, and then there's times you just really don't want that I that detail. Rich detail. Excuse me. I I'll show you on a piece of paper a great way to create fur, and I, it usually starts with putting my darkest value, darkest, coolest value down first, and then using a, a, a particular stroke where I do my medium hair. You've got, say, like a wolf, which has a really thick, deep pile of fur, but when you're looking at it, it's really, it may be in clumps. And you create your clumps of fur with your different values, okay? And I can show you how to do that. That's not what this animal has. So I can't really, uh, now we, last year we did a wolf. Um, and we did an owl. And the owl we did last year, I mean, that I was amazed at the success rate. I mean, everybody did so well with that, that bird. In no particular order, I'm just going to read these off to make sure we have everyone's name. Hillary B, Faye S, yep. Buddy P, Linda yep. C, mm -hmm. Larry N, Amanda E, mm -hmm. and Ann W. You got it. Everyone's name in there? Yep. 
Great. So when you're ready to when you're ready to do your drawing, Matt. You got oh, to no, you you got to do it. <laughs> I have to do it. It is over here. You are, well, I can't look at them. You've got to bend them so I can't see the words. Well, I didn't know you were doing that. Well, no, but I want to do it soon. Yeah, go ahead. Who asked me to bend their name? At them up in random form. I'm just going to set them here for now. They're just going to be sitting here. Um, I don't want to see anybody's things. I don't No, no, because I don't, I'm just going to like, yeah, I just want to know. I've got a yucky, it's, it's fine. I can't see anything. What about this? Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Because it's like fun. Look at you with your She's got all her devices. Uh, no, I'm cool. All right, I'm going to draw now. It's going to be up to you guys. Are you, are you watching? You got it there, Matt? What I'm going to do is I'll draw first for the flamingo, and then I'm going to draw for the uh, impala. Now, it'll be up to you guys if you want to switch. I'm not going to say, you know, it's up to you. But here we go. I'm going to go ahead, my hands in the pile. For the flamingo, we have Buddy. Buddy got the flamingo. Yeah. 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 Buddy got the flamingo. You see, it was his idea to do yeah. the flamingo on the first. I switch for that one. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! He did. Well, you'll have to talk to whoever gets the next one. I have Buddy down for the flamingo. Yay! Good job, Buddy. And for the impala, we have. Linda! <laughs> so there's where our pieces are going. So you guys are going I don't know why you're going to make me I like to try to guess. No, I don't who's who's going to get it? Yeah, and I really thought Ham would get it. I really thought you'd write it. Maybe next year. Uh, that's kind of what we're going to try to do. So there's our two winners right there in one in one screen. We got there. We got Linda. <laughs> there's our Impala girl and Buddy right behind her. He gets the flamingo, and it's funny because it was Buddy's idea. He told me last year he really wanted to do a flamingo, and I think that's funny. So there you go. <laughs> there we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Congratulations to our winners. Mm -hmm. All right, what I'm going to get ready to do now is I'm pretty much not going to do any more on my Impala himself. Um, I may kind of look at it because I know it's 1243, um, and I know I want to be able to get to our Flamingo. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am going to go ahead and start doing some of the grass in the foreground on the piece. Now, I'm going to use... A pretty sharp little filbert. Um, this brush uh, is a, I guess I need to put my glasses back on, <laughs> but it's a um, number two Pro Stroke Power Curl. It's a cheapo cheapo brush. Awesome, awesome workhorse brush though. I do like it. And again, the grass in the foreground. I am going to create, I want to create the look of grass but I do have to cool it down because remember we are working under a uh, diminished light mm -hmm. so I'm adding I'm, I'm taking my um, yellow ochre and I am putting in some of the purple but I'm adding white as well that's just going to lighten up our value a little bit and remember we talked about the direction and everything as far as the way our, our grasses are going to go. I still want to pull it towards the uh, foreground. I can tell this is going to go in rough. This is not working the way I want it to work. What did you say the color for? Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. 
and white and, and the diazonine purple. You want it to just be uh, uh, just enough purple to cool it down. You just don't want it to turn purple, though. You're pulling that down. I am. I'm just putting in a diff There's going to be all kinds of um, colors going in here, but right now this is what I'm... I'm trying to go in this direction with a lot of the, the grasses. There's going to be, you know, I, I, I like having my grasses in the background, although this brush is probably, I'm probably going to switch brushes here in a minute. This is not doing what I want it to do. So I am switching brushes from the Power Acryl. I'm going to flip back over to my round that I was using earlier, and it's the, the little Hamburg. Let's see. Yeah, this is going to work better for me. Now, you're going to notice, too, with, with even with the grasses that I'm putting in now, um, I'm going to leave a lot of dark value, meaning I'm leaving a lot of negative space because I think it's important in this piece that we have that dark, the darkness. Um, but I'm going to mix up my strokes. They're not all going in to go in the same direction. Um, some are going to be laying down. Some are going to be going the uh, opposite direction of, because that's kind of how grass is. And I'm going to change my values too. I don't want all my grass the same color, the same value. Remember, we are going into the foreground a little bit here. And with the foreground, you're going to, this is where you can use your detail, your impasto paint, if you will, anything that you want to add. And since now I know this one's going into Linda's house. <laughs> any any suggestions, Linda? Is there any colors that you have to have in your piece? You know, I think whatever you pick will be beautiful. Okay, just curious. I, I think, thank you. I think you need to quit and work on the flamingo. <laughs> that buddy says we need to quit. Get on that flamingo. we got to get that done. <laughs> okay, that's funny. This is, this is good. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, this is this is nice. I'm glad that I got got some winners here, and it's neat because here with the Impala piece, you can say, well, the original Impala, it's yeah, it all be a different is actually will be on tour in China next year. Um, the one on the against the wall is going to Vancouver, then to Arizona, and then it will end up in China. So I will not see that piece for a very long, long time, if at all. You can come to my house. I'll come and look at yours. <laughs> you need to put a passport on the back of it. Yeah, with stamps on it. Yeah. Now, I'm just putting these pieces in. Um, it's not doesn't look all that interesting at first. We're kind of... I'm actually going to mix some other colors in here besides to make it a little bit more interesting. We have, we have stayed within a very, very limited um, palette with this piece. We pretty much stayed with the, with the warm uh, siennas and pads. It's, it's nice. Um, I, I think that makes a very successful piece. But since we are dealing with grasses here, I am going to introduce a little bit of green into this piece, just a little bit. I'm going to pull it down though. I'm going to actu actually put a little bit of the yellow ochre in, make it a little bit more homogenous because we do not want to just go starkly in with a bright green in this piece. By mixing the yellow ochre into this, we've already used a lot of yellow ochre, it will make it less... Um, it won't be like you all of a sudden you say, oh, you sure did put a lot of green in there. It's going to make it a little bit more subtle. Um, and what, we're going over the legs and areas. We we're going to have to work on some of the values. And here's an interesting thing. When you're working with um, pieces, uh, you know, something that like the grass that's going over the legs, and if I need to, you know, it's, the values are so close that you can't tell. This is when I will actually lighten values up to accommodate the situation. Um, and by doing that, and I don't know, Matt, if you're going to be able to zoom in a little yeah. bit on me on the grass. If you can I pull into the, the zoom view. 
Okay, if you can pull into this leg area here. Um, what I'm going to try to show is that when I'm putting this grass across here, oops, pull it down, pull it down. There we go. Where I'm working here, okay, right in this area. I may actually pull out into where I have a light background here. And then it goes into this dark area of the leg and back down. I can actually change things a little bit. If I want to make that grass look a little bit browner, where it's hitting the, gra uh, the light area, I'll change the value a little bit by making that dark. And then I'll go back and change the area where it's going over the leg to light. And it won't, it won't be that you all of a sudden you say, well, that's a two-tone piece of grass. Well, no, your, your brain will not, con not pick that up on that. But it will just realize right here that I just went with a much lighter blade of grass. I can even go even lighter than that. I'm going to go in with straight white. It's something that's very subtle, but it's, it, it's necessary to be able to convey that, like just right here over this hock or this area of the leg, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going light. And so you can start mixing in some of these other colors and keeping it interesting. Um, I actually use quite a bit of whites, just straight whites and light, light blues and stuff like that. But I can't in this piece simply because I have a low light situation. I wouldn't have that with my grass if it were indeed uh, sunset. You wouldn't have the little brights. But I could use a dark blue as a highlight for some of the grasses. I just want to create the look that this animal's standing in grass. And I'm going to experiment here with some of the... Yeah, this work, this works. I'm using a blue highlight instead of a white highlight. And I'm chilling it down just a bit. And by doing that... Um, because we know that the light will get picked up in some areas. And you I just want... blue, you said? Yeah, but I don't know. I'm not going to use too much of it. It's, it's, I have to be careful because we do have a low light. Am I supposed to try to get the palette in that shot, too? Uh, not so much. It's okay. You can if you want to. Because I, this is the colors right here that I was working with. Uh -huh. um, some This green here. I'm using this, this blue over here. This is the... Uh, um, you can't see it, but there's a... Um, okay. It's the king's blue, but it's actually too much, and I don't want to. I don't want to shake this piece up that much um, because you you have to kind of understand too where light is going to fall, and I don't want to um, confuse the issue. When when it is dark out and we start to see less color, um, we we. We, we don't see it. We can't. Our eye can't. It doesn't compute anymore. So what I'm really trying to do is just create the, the illusion of grass and the color palette would be very limited here because we are in a low light situation. So I'm actually putting some of this grass is looking more like um, grays because that's how we would see it at night or in a very low light situation. But we do want to have at least a little bit of the contrast that you would have. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm about to wrap it up on this guy. Just before one. It's just before one, so we're going to use, need the rest of our time to work on the... Uh, the flamingo. Does anybody need to take a break and grab a bite to eat? Mm -hmm. It is one o'clock. Yeah, okay. Are you do? For anybody who wants us to go take a bite, get a bite to eat. Oh, are we not having lunch? No, if you, don't you want to go eat? Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm asking. I'm saying anybody wants to go take a bite to eat. I'm I'm not gonna we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna make it a quick bite though, if we can, as quickly as we can so we can get back to the flamingo. Um I know 
some of y'all are traveling back today. How far is everybody? Who's got to drive the farthest? Probably, Probably Georgia. Here. And are you going back today? I'm going to Knoxville. You're going to Knoxville today, so you're not heading no. back till tomorrow. Um, no, I'm heading out tonight. You are. Yeah. Back to Georgia. No, no, no. Back to Knoxville. Her daughter lives in. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go spend the night with my daughter. Okay. Tour. Yeah. But do you, when do you go back to? When are you going back to Georgia? Tomorrow. How how far drive is that for you? Uh, about five hours. Wow! Thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank that was you. A whole new experience. Before oh. you do well, I want to get a picture of this because I decided I need to do a lot on my. Okay. You because I need to raise my uh, browns down here on the land. Uh huh. I need to bring them up. Okay. I'm going to uh, stop on this guy. Okay. I'm going to turn picture. off my uh, computer here. Excuse me. So I'm going to get over here in the sink. I'm talking about here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just not enough land. I'm going to have to raise it up. To okay. Well, you can. You know what to do, then. Yeah. So. Burn it up. Yeah, you can do that. You want to go ahead and cut the string for what? Um. Yeah, you can go ahead and cut the string, guys. We'll be. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in an hour or less. We'll see you yeah. soon.